What you see from the American colleges, what that does in terms of, uh, as we say, uh, freedom and self-determination there if uh, their emotional state is such that they cannot control it whatsoever. But back to the talk. What I would like, therefore, to focus on is the first concept, self-determination. A lack of freedom from the state precludes any discussion about, uh, around freedom and capitalism. Living off, excuse me, being married to, being trapped by, all of these relationships with the state mean that freedom and capitalism remain distant. Uh, and often unknown areas of life. Perhaps decades ago I might have discussed the, the crushing lack of self-determination in the USSR, the, 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 uh, the old DDR, the, the Deutsche Demokratische Republic, uh, China. Today I might talk about it in Cuba, uh, China again, Venezuela, Ecuador, oh, and a moment's silence please for Fidel Castro's passing. Yeah. Um, I, I want to be on record as, as, uh, as starting that up. Uh, and a whole host of countries in North Africa and the Middle East. Instead, I wish to speak to you about a lack of self-determination in far more insidious, uh, 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 far less apparent form. While we talk about the imploding entitlement state, I'm particularly interested in the imploding welfare state and the effects on the human beings within. I think there's plenty of people, plenty of states that you forget that there's actually human beings within that system. And globally, how its ill effects snowball, destroying freedom and capitalism in turn. In short, I argue, if, if you defend self-determination from the state, freedom and capitalism will look after themselves. No problem.